Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, thanks for coming to my channel. I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, it really helps YouTube promote my channel if you'd hit the like button before you leave, so I'd appreciate it if you'd do that. Um, before we get too far into the video, I wanted to thank some groups of people. Um, my subscribers, we just passed 4,000 subscribers, and that's amazing, and I really appreciate all the support and nice comments and financial contributions you guys have made to me through various means. Um, I also wanted to express thanks for my uh, Patreon members. I have a, a big crew of them that I think I, uh, I shouted out in my last uh, video, uh, four or five new ones. So uh, thank you guys for the support. I really appreciate it. And uh, if, you know, there's a, a lot of cool stuff going on over there. So thanks for your participation in that. And I'm glad you're part of our community over there. Um, so the other day I did a video about uh, making some hardware related jewelry and one of the things that I made that I kind of really liked was the it was a ring that had a nut on top of it that uh, spun on a little tube uh, that I had sticking out of the top of it um, and that one is super fun fidgety kind of ring and so we were thinking what else is fun to, that spins? And so we thought, you know what? Um, pinwheels are kind of fun and whimsical. So um, I'm going to make a, a ring that has a pinwheel on top of it today, just for giggles. And we'll see how it comes out. I made a prototype, and I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, let's get started on this. OK, so when I started playing with the idea of doing a pinwheel, this is the first one I came up with. It's just a square and you find the center and you cut almost to the center from each corner and then you can fold over the, the top uh, piece of sheet. This is 26 gauge which is kind of a little thin and sharp when you polish it so I'm going to use something a little thicker than that for this. On my one head I made a ring. Uh, this is similar to what I'm going to make but this was kind of a prototype and um, I used kind of a a low dome half round wide band here and I mounted a, a little tube on it with a kind of a, what you call it, a spacer in there and then um, for this one I just uh, soldered down a flattened ball to be its little kind of uh, cap for that. On the one I'm going to do um, this afternoon here I think I'm gonna put a little stone on it and I have a little, uh, little peridot that's kind of probably I don't know, four millimeters maybe it might be five it's probably five I guess but uh, I'm gonna make a little bezel for that and we'll mount it in a similar thing like this the other thing I did on this one that I'm gonna change is I put a texture on the back side because I thought uh, it would look good when I folded it over the top uh, to have something different than the upper part here but very little of it shows when you fold it over so I'm going to put the texture on the top and fold the smooth side over. Okay. I also toyed with the idea of, it's probably not pickled very long, I'm doing it where I solder some copper to the back of some silver like that and create a two-tone thing. And that's, uh, that's a nice idea too, and I might do that at some point, but I did not solder these together very well, so I need to get a better join if I'm going to use this. So I'm going to go ahead and make the one with the texture today. Uh, but no, there's all sorts of different kind of fun ideas you could do. So I probably at some point we'll make some matching earrings too that uh, dangle down and have the little spinny things on it. But, all right, so let's see. I'm gonna have to order a new one of these pretty soon. I'm doing lots of little sketches in here. So all right, so I think like I said, I'm gonna use a thicker sheet than I originally did. That was 26. This I'm going to use, uh, well, what I used here was 18, which is pretty thick. But you run it through the rolling mill to get a pattern on it, and that squishes a little bit thinner too. So I'm going to use that kind of, a, it's almost like that anti-skid kind of look on this particular texture plate. And we'll do that with a piece of sheet. And then we'll, um, we'll, we'll get it all cut up, make a band, cut the tube, put a little spacer on it. We'll have to drill a hole in the band, um, you know, as well as drilling a hole in the center of the, the square piece. But then after that it should be straightforward just making a band and putting a hole in there and soldering them together. Uh, but first let's make a little bezel for that stone. Um, so I'm going to use some 3 16 inch fine silver bezel strip. First we'll file the end flat. 
And this is kind of a tall bezel, so I'm going to cut it in half or, or thereabouts. Should probably just keep some other heights around, but it's easier just to order one kind and make it smaller if you need it. Make a little mark. <clears throat> side for a moment. Like I said, I'm going to trim this down a little bit so it's not quite so much to file later. push these past each other a little bit and then pull them back so they're pushing together when you uh, go to solder them together. That way you, know, you don't have the chance of them relaxing and pulling apart so much. Pull that off, dip him back into the shape of the stone. Mm -hmm. Okay, I need to create a little step in there. And the other thing is, I'm going to be using some tubing that is relatively narrow there. And so I need to build that inwards a little bit more than I usually would. So I'm going to use a piece of 14 gauge round wire in a ring. We'll see how that looks. I thought I had a piece of it over here. Here's a piece. Be pretty small, so we can do it pretty small. Yeah, that's quite a bit too big, so we need to remove a little bit. May even have to do another inner insert there too, but let's get that soldered in and we'll see. So I'm going to file it down a little bit. Too much? Okay. So, like I said, I may put a little inner ring of some smaller gauge wire in order to attach this, or I may put a Put a ring around this, actually. Let's see. Hmm. The other one I just put a, a disc on top so I didn't have to deal with the hollow thing. I could have used a bigger piece of tubing, I guess, but it would have been hard to drill that big of a hole in that half round wire that I'm going to use without uh, getting it off center or something, which, at least for me, that's hard to do. I have trouble getting things centered sometimes. Mm -hmm. 
just generally make a little circle of pieces of solder on the pad. And then set your bezel on top of it with the insert in there. Here. You want to make sure it's sitting down there flat first before you do this. But another option would be to just solder it to a base now and then drill a hole that's a little bit smaller than this. And that's my, that might be what I will do. That might be the easiest. So let's do that. I'll solder a piece of sheet on the back. I could have done this first, drilled the hole, and then added the little layer to lift the stone up a bit. That would have been just fine as well. Okay, let's see. these guys flexed a little bit. I just flexed my lip. <laughs> I think I'm just going to throw some solder on here like this so it's in place already and sweat it on there. So there's already a puddle. There's already some solder in this thing anyway so chances are I'll just with the extra here solder down pretty easily. Alright, I'm just going to go punch a hole through this with my drill and I'm going to make it a little closer to this piece of tube that we're going to use so you can solder it to the base a little better. So I cut out a 20 millimeter uh, piece of 18 gauge uh, sterling silver and next we're going to texture it over on the uh, rolling mill using this texture plate here. So we'll move over there for a second. Apologies for my messy area here. Okay, so I have this adjusted uh, for as thick as that other one, but I have to loosen it up just a little bit in order to get the 18 gauge sheet engaged in the gears, or in, not the gears, but the uh, rollers here. And then kind of squeeze it. Now. You don't get enough of it in there when you start squeezing it down, it pushes it outwards. Okay, let's see how this works out. So we got a pretty good texture there. All right, so let's take that back. Okay, so let's flatten this back out a little bit and then I'm going to anneal it to make it easier to cut and bend because by running it through the rolling mill we work hardened it pretty seriously. So we're just going to heat it up and let it cool off and then we'll soften it back up a little bit. Ok, 
Okay, I'm gonna file this on the edges. Just I'll make sure they're all pretty flat. I'm gonna remeasure it to make sure it's still square. Sometimes when you roll things through the rolling mill, it squishes them one direction more than another. Depending upon the characteristics of whatever you're rolling through them. It's about 21 that way. It's still about 20 that way. Yep, I need to take about a millimeter off this side. Let's just get us a little closer to square again. I'm going to scribe lines across the from corner to corner. So I'll try to get them as close as I can anyway. It looks to me like you could do multiple different types of these. <clears throat> I've seen patterns for making five bladed ones or six bladed ones or more. I was going to do a five bladed one too, but <clears throat> for time's sake I mean. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to drill a hole that's slightly bigger than this through the center of this. And then we're going to cut these almost up to uh, the center point. Not enough, not enough where it will cut through to that hole, but we'll be able to bend those things over. So we'll be right back. Hole drilled. I used to always try and drill things using bits in my Dremel, but I've been having way better luck at getting them positioned where I want just using my uh, cordless drill, surprisingly. Okay, so now I just need to cut down these lines right from the corners. I'm going to try and end about millimeter away. Sixteenth of an inch. You slip and go too far like that, I have to solder it. <laughs> I was just going to warn you against doing that. <laughs> uh, okay, let's fix it. I'm going to do that on all. I'm going to put a ring on the top of this. I think that'll um, actually allow for smoother operation anyway. So I'll just make a little ring out of 18 gauge round or something like that and put a ring on there. <laughs> Good demonstration, Chad. Mm -hmm. You could have used the saw, and it probably was what I should use, but I'm not a big fan of sawing, so. Okay, so I'm going to make some little rings that fit around this pretty well. So let me find some 18 gauge. Here's a little 18 gauge floating around. I was going to need some of these anyway. When I uh, solder the tube onto the 
the top of the band here, I need a little spacer right there as well. So, <laughs> okay. solder that guy closed and then uh, there'll be some solder on here there's already solder in there I'll just add him to that and uh, I need it on the other side actually because the other side's going to be facing up I just realized that would be just like something for me to do <laughs> so let's put it on this side here all right looks like I have some solder there so Go ahead and get started. Soldering something little to something big like this. I just put most of the heat on the big piece because it takes longer for that one to reach temperature. That will not only add some strength since I cut that one by accident, uh, that'll also provide a little space for the bezel to sit on top of, which I think I like. So I think I'm going to let that pickle for a while and let's make the band. And then we can create the apparatus that will support the uh, pinwheel. So I'm going to use some half round, low dome half round. I'll look up the number on this. I don't remember which kind it is. It's the second skinniest one, I think. Uh, but I'll look that up and find out for sure. I think I'm going to make about a size about eight and a half. Got a strip of paper for it over there, I think. Yeah, that's probably the piece I used. That's eight and a half or nine. So we we'll use that to measure our wire. Just cut off a piece about like that. I'm going to make it kind of a, if you notice this one, I did kind of a rounded square ring. I think that's kind of a good choice for this sort of a thing. We'll see. So it won't sit quite so high on the finger. haven't had a chance to check out my Patreon uh, links. Uh, Patreon is a place where I offer exclusive videos, ad-free content, uh, depending upon your tier, live streams, and uh, a Discord server where everybody can post pictures of their work and share ideas. And uh, it's a nice community where I'm meeting a lot of new people and they're sharing the way the way they do things, and I share the way I do things, and I've learned a lot from them. So I think other people are they're starting to. There's enough people over there now to where they're starting to interact amongst each other more and helping each other, which is kind of nice. So but there's four different tiers of membership. The first one mostly gets you ad-free content. After that, you start getting extra bonuses.
Okay, so I'm going to clean off any little excess solder I have on the outside here. Like that. I'm going to round it out on the ring handle to start with. I have the square mandrel that's got rounded corners on it that makes for a nice shape for some rings. So I'm going to put the solder joint right in the middle of the bottom side there. Try and keep it lined up so we get those nice kind of squared off sort of sides. So I'm going to put the, the hole for the tube in the top of the the side that's opposite of the solder joint. So I'm going to, first off, I'm going to try and eyeball it, and then after I realize that it's really crooked, I'll probably have to resort to measuring it. rounded corners so it's going to be hard to get an exact it looks like we're pretty close but okay well I'm going to go try and drill this and I'll be right back okay I got it pretty close to centered not perfect but close um, I need to cut myself a piece of this tubing and uh, we'll solder it in place. So I'm going to cut myself a piece longer than I think I need because I can always file it down. So maybe not that long. I should just use my lighter vise. showed this thing to my some of my beginners uh, some of my beginning class people and they love it because one of the things that's hard when you're when you first start is like filing a perfectly flat surface that's challenging a little bit this thought I should be able to just take the saw and right line there there we go, a nice little piece of tube that's got a pretty straight end on it. Okay, so I'm going to cut those little jump rings. solder one of these I want to solder one of these onto this tube the way it will rest nicely on this top and give a little spacer between the band and this so let's see if we can't solder him on I just left enough tube sticking down to in order to go into that hole on the band so we can solder it in there. I'm going to go ahead and solder that in there. So we've got our little spindle. I'm just going to add a little bit of solder in there to make sure it really gets a good connection. There's likely enough solder in there, but get it on there really good. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to bend one end of each of these over 
And so let's start with this one here. The trick is going to be I need to leave enough room for that uh, stone to be on top. Where did I put my flat nose on that? I'm going to bend these upwards a little bit. So these are super sharp, so I'm going to round them out quite a bit. Otherwise you will have a fairly deadly ring. Okay, now comes the fun part. I've got this cut off to about where I want it to be and cleaned it up a little bit so this would turn nicely. I've left just barely enough sticking up over that ring to where I'll be able to solder something to it. I think what I'll do is I'm going to sweat a little bit of easy solder onto here and then I'm going to just push it down over that and I'm going to try and keep it separated from that uh, the ring right underneath it so we continue to have some turning so let's, uh, I think I might do a little solder dabbing on this one too <laughs> let's see where's my... I have a little piece of easy solder that I we use only once in a while. I probably should get some more in. <laughs> I use it once in a while, more than I used to. Okay, so I have a little bit of easy solder sweated onto the back of that and on the inside of the loop, I think, a little bit. I put a little flux on the inside of this tube. So I'm going to see if I can get this to push over there. All right, so I'm a little drenched because we're having a rainstorm and I had to run outside and uh, set up a, a pump. We have a low spot in our backyard and that helps to keep uh, stuff from seeping into the basement when it rains really hard. So, I'm a little damp now. <laughs> and the bezel hot, but I'd rather not get the uh, spinny part hot. At least not as hot as I would like. I, you know, it's not so hot that they stop moving around. But we'll see. I don't think I got it, so let's try that again. So I'm going to give this a try. I put a little bit of flux on that spot. I didn't want to put too much because I'm going to try and get some easy solder to flow. I tried to apply a little bit 
you know, early on. And I had some problems, so we're going to give it another try. I think I got it on there. Let's go find out. <laughs> it's my hope that I have a good solid seam there, and then once we clean this up, it'll spin pretty well. Let's pickle that and then I'll uh, set the stone and polish it and we'll do some final adjustments and see if we can't make that look nice. Okay, I apologize if I have polishing hair. <laughs> so, I got this all filed to the right level I believe. I need to clean up the top a little bit here. our little pinwheel ring. I'll do a little more cleanup and I'll take some good pictures. I might need to do a little top polishing on that bezel there and the sides a little bit. And uh, the hardest part about this one was getting in here and polishing. You could tumble it for a while. I, I'm trying to get a video done tonight so I didn't tumble it because uh, I usually tumble things for about three hours or five or eight hours I should say. Uh, but I think that one came out okay. I like it. It's fun. And you got something you can fiddle with. And actually, when I soldered it in, it felt a little tight, but after polishing it, now it spins really well. So, nice. All right. All right. Well, that was the pinwheel ring video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm glad you stopped by and watched it. Uh, if you um, did, make sure to hit the like button before you leave. That really helps out a lot. I'd love it if you'd leave a comment, or uh, if you want to, check out the video description. There's some great links there for ways to support the channel if you want to participate in that kind of a thing. There's links to my um, website if you want to see some jewelry for sale. Uh, if you want to just give me a tip because you appreciate my content and the work I put into it, uh, there's a buy me a coffee link. If you, I don't know, for example, needed a coffee mug with my face on it, Or might be something like that there. Or of course these things are great, these uh, idea books with, uh, with the uh, graph paper that's not really graph paper but it still has all the kind of nice characteristics of graph paper. So <laughs> those things are all available on the merch store. Or if you wanted to check out the details on my Patreon, that's also there too. So check it out. Uh, come back and watch some more videos. I love that you're watching them and enjoying them. Thanks for stopping by. Happy silversmithing. Take care. Thank you.